Huge thank you to my eight members on YouTube. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. Audio is by far one of the most important things in both your live streams and YouTube videos. And when I say audio, I don't just mean audio quality. That is important, absolutely, but your audio levels are just as important. Tonight, we're gonna sort out what I consider to be the best free audio setup that you can have in OBS for your content. Let's go. How's it going guys? Hope you all having a fantastic day. My name is DSynchro. Guys, I cannot stress enough how important audio quality is for videos and live streams, whether that's quality of audio or loudness that you need to monitor. A few weeks ago, I made a video about five plugins that you need to have in your OBS and one plugin in particular that I mentioned that I needed to make a video on. The Win Audio Capture. Guys, this plugin is a jam. If you're familiar with the Elgato Wave Link, the GoXLR software, the Beacon Mix Creates, software, these programs allow you to change individually what you can hear and what your audience on your live stream can hear. This plugin pretty much allows you to do exactly that, only it's all done within OBS. Now, this isn't a replacement for any of the tools that I mentioned, but this is a good way to separate the audio of what you can hear and what your viewers on your live stream can hear. It makes it super convenient because then you can change the audio levels in a very comfortable manner. So let's get this started. What are we gonna do? So we're going to be doing five things in this video. Number one, we're going to download and install the plugin. Number two, we're going to set up our audio in our OBS and a few scenes for our audio. Number three, we're going to be setting up a few audio channels together and I'm gonna be doing my best to explain what each of them do. Number four, we're going to be enabling our Twitch VOD track. That way we can make it so certain audios doesn't go into our VODs or our clips. And finally, number five, we're going to set up our audio track so then our recorded audio go into their own separate tracks for our YouTube videos. We got a lot of things to do, so let's start with step one. So step one is downloading and installing. We can't really use the plugin if we don't have the plugin now, can we? <laughs> let's download this bad boy. The link of it is gonna be in the description. Click the link and it'll take you to the OBS forum website. Hit the go to download button on the top right and it'll take you to the GitHub. On the GitHub, scroll down to assets and then download the zip file. Once the zip is downloaded, open it up, select everything and drag it into your OBS directory. If it asks you to replace anything, just click yes. Once you're done, start up your OBS and let's go into step two. So in step two, we're gonna be organizing our audio settings and some scenes. Okay, so here we have a very basic and bare bones version of OBS. We have our just chatting scene and we have our gameplay scene over here. We also have our desktop audio and our microphone. Essentially every streamer's very first stream, including my own. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head over to settings. We're going to go over to our audio and we're going to get rid of any of the global audio devices that we have. We're just going to disable them. We don't need them anymore. Okay, after you're done, click apply and then click OK. Awesome. Now we're going to be making a new scene and we're going to call it audio. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to our other scenes like our just chatting and our gameplay. We're going to go over to sources and then we're going to click the plus and then we're going to head over to scene and we're going to add that new audio scene that we created into them, right? So now we have an audio scene inside just chatting and then we're going to go to gameplay. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to click plus scene audio and then add our audio scene inside our gameplay scene. Cool. Basically any scene that you want to have audio on, you just want to add that audio scene inside of it as a source. Awesome, now that you're done with that, let's go to step three and set up our audio channels. All right, so for this step, we're going to be sorting out a couple of audio channels. Head over to our audio scene, go over to sources, click the plus button, and let's add an audio input capture. This is where we're going to be adding our microphone. I'm gonna name this open square bracket, microphone, close square bracket. I'm gonna select our microphone. Now, any audio source that I create, I'm going to be adding an open and closed square bracket at the start of the finish. This is basically just to help keep track so then we can tell that those are audio sources. Awesome, now head over to sources again, click the plus, and we're going to be making four application audio output captures. First one, we're gonna name game. Second one, we're going to name voice chat. Third one, we're going to name browser. And then final one, we're going to name music. Okay, awesome. Now we have a microphone and four audio captures. Let's start configuring our audio. First, let's start with our voice chat. 
double click the voice chat source and this property window is going to come up. Now all of this may look just a little bit overwhelming to some people, but it's surprisingly easy. Ignore all of this and head straight to add from currently active sessions. Click this little session drop down bar. And since this is our voice chat, we're going to select our discord and then click add executable and then click OK. And there we go. Now our Discord audio will be coming through that source and we can actually turn the volume up and down for our audience to hear it. One of the really cool things about this plugin is that you're not limited to just one software per audio source. You can add as many as you want. Say I don't use Discord. Let's suppose I want to add my Telegram instead to the voice chat. All I have to do is boot up Telegram, then go over to the voice chat source again. And where it says session, just click there, look for Telegram, and then add executable. Now, any audio coming from my Telegram will also be broadcasted on my voice chat. Now, at least for me, there's a tiny, tiny bug I sometimes bump into where the session tab is completely grayed out. Or sometimes it won't update and it won't add the new programs that are currently active. If you ever come across this issue, there's a very easy fix. To fix that issue, usually what I do is I come up to this plus button over here and then I type a random name or anything. And then I simply just delete it afterwards. And usually what that'll do is that it'll update the session list over here. And that usually fixes the issue for me whenever I bump into it. All right, let's do the same thing now with our browser. Double click your browser and open up your properties tab, head over to session and then select your browser of choice and then click add as a cutable. And like I mentioned before, you can add multiple programs as well. So if you use more than one browser while you're streaming, then you're able to do that as well. I got my Microsoft Edge open over here, head over to session, and then we have msedge.exe at executable. And there you go. This now controls the audio coming from my browsers. With music, same steps as before. Double click your music source, open up your properties, head over to sessions and add your favorite music player to the mix, whether you're using Spotify or VLC media player, or for whatever reason, Windows media player, if you use that, just simply select it and add the executable and then click OK. And finally, we have game audio. So with the game audio, we're actually doing something slightly different. You can still do the exact same method that we did before if you want, but I'm gonna show you another method that's a little bit more convenient. So double click your game source and where it says mode over here, change this from capture audio sessions from selection of executables to capture foreground window with a hotkey and then click OK. Now head over to settings, come over to hotkeys, Scroll down until you can see your game and then set a hotkey to capture foreground window. Click apply and then OK. Now, whenever you're playing your game, instead of you having to alt tab and add the executable into the audio properties, you could just press your hotkey and it'll automatically add it for you. And like I mentioned, you can still use the other method if you prefer it over this one. I'm going to quickly use my Spotify as an example for this. My Spotify, as you can see, is linked to the music, but watch what happens once I press the hotkey with Spotify selected. Now my game audio is capturing the audio coming from Spotify as well. And you can do this with any other software as well. You can do this with your browser. You can do this with your games. It just makes it very, very convenient. The only downside of this method is that you have to use a hotkey and not a lot of people really like using hotkeys. Cool. Now that we have the audios organized, we can have it as loud as we want for ourselves and then turn it up and down for our audience. So if you want to have music blasting on your ears, but you don't really want your audience to hear a lot of it, well, now you can do that. It's super, super convenient. This also helps you manage and troubleshoot your audio if something during your stream is a little bit too loud. So now that we have our audio channels and our audio level sorted out, let's enable our VOD track. That way we can make certain audios in our live stream not show up on our VODs or our clips. So what is the Twitch VOD track? This is a feature that Twitch released a while back and then OBS implemented it into the software. Essentially what it does, it makes it so the audio that your viewers will hear whilst you're live is in a different track than the audio that will go to your VODs. Let's suppose you want your audience whilst you're live to hear all these four sources. You want them to hear your game, your voice chat, your browser and your music. But you don't want, for example, your music going going into your VODs. You're essentially removing that music audio source from going into the track that will go towards your VODs and clips, whilst still letting that music source 
go into your live stream. It's a little bit complicated to explain, so it'll make more sense once we actually do it. On my stream, for example, I have it so none of my music will ever go to my VODs or clips. And trust me, this is a game changer. Having it like that makes it so any clip that my community makes of me doesn't have any music on it. And turning that content into TikToks and YouTube shorts is super, super convenient when it doesn't have music. That way you can't get demonetized. So the first thing we gotta do is head over to the settings in our OBS. Head over to output and then change the output mode from simple to advanced. On the streaming tab, you will have this audio track and Twitch VOD track. Keep your audio track on one, enable your Twitch VOD track and set that to two. Press apply and then click OK. Cool, now we enabled our Twitch VOD track. Now we just have to configure it. Right click anywhere in your audio mixer and go to advanced audio properties. Ignore these other settings, what we're looking for is the tracks. What I'm gonna get you guys to do here is uncheck all of these tracks. Let me quickly explain what this is. Essentially, when you're live streaming or recording, your audio gets put into something called a track. And then, that track gets broadcasted or added to a video recording. On that little menu, we're essentially selecting which audio goes to which track. In our settings, we made us so our live stream audio, which is what we hear whilst we're live, is set to track 1. And the audio that goes into our VODs is now set to track 2. So here, we would add things like our browser, our game, our microphone, our music, and our voice chat to track one, which is what our viewers are gonna be listening to whilst we're live. And then for track two, we want everything except our music. We would take every single one of these boxes except the music one. Now, all of this audio is gonna go to our VODs except our music. The other tracks, three to six, don't do anything unless we assign them to do something. So if you're just streaming, those tracks three to six won't really matter much. But what we're going to be doing for our next and final step is actually make really good use of those tracks. We're going to make it so whenever we record a video on OBS, each audio will go to a separate track. So the way if you're making, for example, a gaming video and your friend is just a little bit too loud, you can turn them down easily on your video editing software. We're also going to make it so the music doesn't get recorded into the video. So that way, if you happen to be playing some bangers while you're playing your favorite video game, your footage won't be completely useless on YouTube. <laughs> All right, let's start off by going back to our settings in OBS. Head over to output and go to recording. Here, we're going to unassign audio track one and we're going to assign audio track three, four, five, and six. Now click on the audio tab over here and we're doing this to basically keep things organized. We're going to name each of the tracks. So track one is our live stream. Track two is our VOD. Then track three is going to be our microphone. Track four is going to be our voice chat. Track five is going to be our game. And then finally track six is going to be our browser. Click apply and then click OK. We're not going to include the music for the reasons that I mentioned before. And now what we're going to do is we're going to assign each audio source to the proper track. So don't touch track one and two. Starting with our microphone, we want it to be on track one for our live stream, we want it to be on track two for our VODs, and we want it to be on track three for our recording. This is the microphone track in our recording. Then we have our voice chat. We want our voice chat to be in our live stream. We want it to be on our VODs. We don't want it to be on track three because that's our microphone, but we want it to be on track four because that's our voice chat track. Is everything making sense so far? I hope you guys are kind of understanding. If not, feel free to ask me any questions on Twitch. Then for our game, we want track one, track two, and we want track five for our recording. And then in our browser, we want track one, two, and we want track six. At the end, all of your tracks should look something like this. Your browser, one, two, and six. Your game, one, two, and five. Your microphone, one, two, and three. Your music, only track one. And then your voice chat, one, two, and four. Good job, guys. We organized an entire audio setup. All right, guys, good job. Let's summarize all of the cool stuff that we did today. We installed a banger of a plugin on our OBS. We set up our audio scene. We added that audio scene to the scenes that we want to have audio on. We added some audio capture sources and configured them accordingly. And we also organized our audio tracks for both our streams, our VODs, and our video recordings. And there we go, guys. One of the best free audio setups for our live streams and for recording videos. This is meant to be a relatively basic audio setup, but 
you can add so much more to it if you want. This will help you organize your audio levels far better, keep it all nice and neat and tidy, and easier to troubleshoot if you bump into any issues. You'll be able to listen to your teammates in your game and blast music as loud as you want without deafening your viewers and without overpowering your voice in your live streams. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this video was able to help you or a friend of yours in any way, shape, or form. If you have any questions and want to learn more, come check us out on Twitch. I stream Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays starting at 4 p.m. Australia West Standard Time. I'd love to see you there. That's all for this video, friends. I hope you all have an amazing day and an amazing stream. And if you guys want to check out some more cool tutorials and learn how to do some more awesome things, you'll be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out these two videos. Trust me, you won't regret it.